I wanted to come on here to discuss a piece of the major hype controversy that I think was either skipped or missed by a lot of people. Um, a little bit of introduction about myself. I am a sexologist, I am a sex educator, I am a former sex worker, and the owner of an adult business. So my perspective was really targeted towards the sexual abuse aspect of the alleged domestic violence situation. And I noticed in Kirby's second video specifically that she made mention of the expectation of sex happening after altercations and, and incidences of domestic violence. Consider for a moment it a sort of perverted version of makeup sex and that expectation being placed on a victim and the pressure of non-rejection because rejection could lead to a further incident of violence. And so I think that little portion of her video kind of got glazed over in amongst all of the other dramatics and controversy. So a bit of psychological sex education. Most people's sexual preferences, tendencies, perversions, kinks, likes and dislikes are formed within approximately the first five years of life. Now he spoke in his videos about an incident that happened when he was approximately six years old uh, with violence between his mother and his father. And given that exposure to a six-year-old child, I think it can cause an uncontrolled rush of emotions and an uncontrolled rush of adrenaline. Now, when your adrenaline is rushing, it can sometimes be misconstrued by the human body depending on how comfortable or how often you experience these these rushes of adrenaline it can be interpreted as an overall sensation it can be interpreted too as an overwhelming arousal all of your senses are heightened in that kind of fight or flight moment now for a young child kind of unable to properly digest those kinds of emotions those rushes of feelings and sensations um it, it could be something that looking back later in in you know days afterwards seeing certain wounds could have reimagined or re-triggered those kinds of sensations and caused a further arousal and and rush of adrenaline and consciousness and permanency to those kinds of urges and tendencies now we also can look at previous skits done in just at domestic violence being a subject matter, the content and context of that subject matter, and how it relates to that childhood trauma that was discussed on his end, as well as the actual threat and execution of the cutting, which has a very similar correlation if you look at placement of the body, selection of parts of the body, etc., in a similar fight or flight context. So I think that literal recreation can be very telling into the psyche of a perpetrator. Now, most sexual crimes and most sexual criminals and perpetrators, the arousal phase comes in the throes of the crime and the act itself. Think about a rapist, uh, a sexual assault assailant, um, a pedophile, a necrophiliac, anything along those lines that, that has the arousal portion as part of it. It's usually in the moment, in the act, in the crime, where is peak arousal. And quite often after that kind of a scenario, there is days, weeks, hours afterwards, months, sometimes even years of, of remorse, of guilt, of overcompensation. You can see that even through, you know, smaller incidences or lower scale incidences of, of domestic violence, emotional abuse, et cetera, where there's an overcompensation. You're, you're showered with, with flowers or compliments or gifts afterwards as, as a way of kind of making up for it in, in essence to win that person back which is equally a part of domestic violence and manipulation gaslighting and uh, mind control in many aspects but to hear of someone having their arousal points after the fact so after after the violence we've all seen the photos We've all seen the photos and to, to picture in your mind 
drawing that person back in through your guilt, through your cutting of your wrist along your hand, reminiscent of your, your childhood trauma, and to put the expectation of sex on your victim at that point, and to be aroused by that, to be excited. Now let's get graphic here. We're talking about excited to the point of arousal. We're talking about mounting his victim. We're talking about her face looking how we all know it did. And not just aroused, but to have full sex, to have full intercourse or whatever form or fashion of, of sex that it was, sex implies also to completion. To mount a woman with her face beaten in to the point of ejaculation is a very different kind of perpetrator and criminal than someone who gets caught in throes of passion or uncontrollable rage or deep, dark planning on some sort of an attack. Most of those kinds of criminals, they feel remorse. So this is a cognitive awareness. This is a visual of what the result of one's violence was and is and, and occurred and being excited by that. Similarly to childhood, when that same rush occurred, and this is how things develop from childhood to adulthood, but we are also talking about someone who decided to use that as a sympathy card. Now, I don't know the father, I don't know the mother, I don't know anything about that situation beyond what he said. But to be cognitively aware, to look at the results of your rage and be aroused to the point of completion is an entirely different adv advancement and extension of that abuse. That is a compiling, that is an evolution, that is, that is a next level. Just like athletes, generation after generation, Olympics after Olympics, the bar gets raised. That is worse than your father, sir. Next piece was his reference to being molested as a child by a male. Molestation and childhood sexual traumas can also shape and form one's sexual preferences, one's phobias, one's isms, one's bigotry, and absolutely one's self-hatred. I'm not surprised that he likes to throw around the word faggot. At the same time, the confusion for children during a, a case of molestation is that physically our bodies are designed to respond to stimulation. So there's a controversy between knowing this is wrong and being aroused. And that can create a self-loathing in people that unless they deal with and get therapy could quite possibly take out on somebody else's face. So there are multiple layers and facets to domestic violence and abuse, most of which we have seen play out over the past week and a half since Kirby's braveness and courage to come forward. There's physical abuse, there's mental abuse, there's emotional abuse. There's social abuse, which we saw with the release of the sex tape and, and the dragging in the comments from certain people, many people, and far too many women, as well as the silence of men. The silence of men around him, the silence of a community and an industry, and the silence to many of us who have been victims in the past is not deafening. It's screaming loud. Many of you, all of you have mothers. Many of you have daughters and sisters and girlfriends and wives. And there was even a bunch of people in the comments mad at her to lawyer up, lawyer up, lawyer up. But the financial abuse was ignored as well. This woman lost her career. It takes money to lawyer up. A friend created a GoFundMe to support 
her efforts in standing up for herself against horrific crimes. And people decided to drag her in the comments. You know, when you financially dominate somebody, you take away their means. You can't lawyer up when your career is gone. You can't leave in a pandemic when you have no money and are a dependent financially. Now I'm highlighting here the sexual component because sexual abuse is very prevalent in domestic violence and abuse scenarios. And the fact of the matter is it has been shown to us that he has taken all of these things away. The mental, the emotional, the physical, the financial, the social, and the sexual. So for that, her reputation deserves to be restored. And for those of you going on about three sides, you're right. In a court of law, there is a plaintiff, there is a defendant, and there are the facts. We have seen the facts. Those photos are fucking facts. His behavior choices are fucking facts. His confessionals and crocodile tears are fucking facts. And they would all play in in a court of law as evidence. People like me would end up on the stand as a professional to sit and speak on these things and to discuss these behavioral patterns. The manipulation, the guilt trips, the threats of violence against oneself to, to children, to, to her, etc. This is also someone responsible for raising children. Now, my last point will be about this. If you can comment in the comments of some of these videos and question her, why didn't she leave the first time? What did you do to deserve it? Oh, you're the biggest fucking whore in the world. You did this and you did that person. Let me tell you the privilege that you have to have never been in a situation where you are faced with choices, where it's do or die. Or worse, it's die or die. You are privileged to have never had that fear. And I use the word privilege specifically because we all know what happens when people overexpose their privilege. This is textbook behavior for domestic violence for gaslighting, for mind control, for manipulation. And if you've never seen a Dr. Phil episode or, or an Oprah show or a Criminal Minds or a CSI or American Justice or Dateline or 2020 or Googled, I suggest you do. It is not hard to research the patterns of abuse. It is not hard to research what is a narcissist? So until you have done those things or have been in that situation yourself, you have the audacity and the privilege to drag a victim. So help you God. So I will repeat my main point. You take your self hatred out on a woman's face. She returns from hospital bloodied and bruised and your dick gets hard and you mount her and you fuck her until you come and you want to come up on these IG lives playing the victim card. This is why you're being canceled. 